All right, church, let's pray. Gracious, all loving God. Lord God, Lamb of God, we ask that you would open our hearts and open our minds because we need a word. We need a word that saves. We need a word that heals. We need a word that restores. We need a word that renews. Lord God, let Rachel decrease so that you will increase. In the strong name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen. So, um, can y'all open up your Bibles to the Gospel of John, chapter 20? I would like to read verses 24 through 29. Will you have John, chapter 20, and beginning at the 21st verse, sorry, 24th verse, please say, Amen. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to juggle microphones to make sure people can hear me. I have issues being still, y'all. So I'm, I'm just going to try and use the microphone as needed. Um, the scripture says, one of the 12 disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see, unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them, and place my hand in the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked. But suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand in the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen him. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. That was from John chapter 20, verses 24 through 29 from the New Living Translation. Um, so church, can we talk? Um, I'm sure some of y'all have kind of figured out that I kind of like music and I even like some stuff that's older than me. Um, I, I, I was one of those kids who has older siblings and when I wasn't supposed to sneak down to listen to their parties, um, I kind of thought it did. Um, I was one of those kids that when my parents would play, play what I call old school, which apparently my oldest daughter's generation calls classic. I don't understand how the old school became classic. Um, I, I, I listened to a lot of music and there was this protest song in the 60s. It, it, it was about protesting the Vietnam War, but, but it was about more than that. It was about inviting us to pay more attention to what we see and what we hear and not just to believe somebody else's record of what's going on. There's something happening here. What it is ain't exactly clear. There's a man with a gun over there telling us we've got to beware. Children, stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. So in the time that we have together, based on this particular passage of scripture, I want to rework that song. Because um, there really is something happening 
in this text. And it's really not as clear as we assume. And so you know what, church folk, we need to stop and check out what's really going down. Because I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, it was this passage of scripture that convinced me that Thomas Didymus called the twin. Y'all, that means he had a twin brother. Um, doubting. And that there was something wrong with doubting. But if y'all can indulge me, when, when I really look at this passage of scripture, uh, it's clear to me that this post-resurrection story is not about doubt. It's clear to me that this post-resurrection story isn't about lots of faith versus little faith. What this post-resurrection story is about is a Jesus who loves us so much that he will show up so that we can believe and so that our faith can be strong. And so, y'all ready for it? So that we can know that our place with God really is secure. All the rest of the remaining 11 disciples were in the upper room together behind locked and closed doors so that the evening of the day that Jesus rose from the grave, they got to experience the resurrected and resurrecting Lord for themselves. They didn't just have to listen to what that woman Mary Magdalene told them. They got to experience Jesus resurrected, alive for themselves. They got to experience what they needed to believe for their faith to get strong and for them to know that their place in God was secure. But Thomas wasn't there. Have y'all ever heard some really good news? And it's so out the box that you kind of wish you were there. It, 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 it's so out the box that you begin to wonder if there's something wrong with you because you were not there. Um, um, ha, 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 have you ever been praying for God to deliver somebody and the one Sunday that you're not in church, you discover that they walk out of that church house delivered? Have you ever been waiting for a breakthrough and you discover that the one day that you skip Bible study is the one day that the breakthrough started breaking through all over the church and you begin to wonder if there's something wrong with you because just the one day you weren't in the place where everybody else was when God showed up and God showed out. And everybody's so excited. They, they, they're so full of joy and they're so full of peace and, and, and they're ready to go for God. When just the day before, just like you, they were ready to give up. So you do it, Rachel. <clears throat> I don't believe your story until I get my own experience for myself. Until God does for me what I need so I can believe that your experience isn't just limited to you. So that I can know for real and for sure that my faith in God has not been wasted. And wonder of wonders, you in that room this time, Eight days have passed. 
And over those eight days, all these other people have added to the story, talking about how, how Jesus showed up and showed himself to them and encouraged them and renewed their faith. And you even feeling more left out now because now it's not just, just the other 11. It's also all these other folks who weren't even as close to Jesus as you were. You were the one who said, let's go ahead. Let's go, let's go, let's go. If Lazarus is just sleeping, let's go. You were the one who said, let's go, we gotta die. Let's, let's die with Jesus. You were the one who was excited when nobody else was excited. And now you're feeling left out and you're in the room. And the next thing you know, Jesus shows up in a locked room because y'all still a little bit scared. And every single thing that you included in your list of what you needed to believe that Jesus was alive, Jesus offers you. This ain't a story about doubt. It's a story about a God who shows up in every locked room that tries to separate us from God. It's about a God in Jesus Christ who doesn't leave anybody behind. It's about a God in Jesus Christ who knows exactly what we need to believe, who knows exactly what we need so our faith can be strong, who knows exactly what we need to know that our spot with God is still secure. If you walked into this church house today and you were wondering if God was as for you as God has been for all those other folk around you, I want you to know that Jesus is busting through your locked door. Jesus is showing up for you. Jesus is offering you whatever it is you need to believe that Jesus is not only alive, but he's still resurrecting hope. He's still resurrecting joy. He's still resurrecting peace. And he's still proving that he can make your faith stronger than Teflon. He's still proving that your spot with God is secure. But church folk, stop. Hey, what's that sound? We need to pay attention to what's really going on. You can never disqualify yourself from God's love and God's peace and God's forgiveness and God's joy and God's resurrecting power just because you missed one Sunday. Okay. Bishop, presiding elder, all y'all other pastors and some of the officers of St. Luke, don't get mad about what I'm about to say. Even if you miss a month of Sundays, but still connect to God in your own house, in your own space, still love God fiercely, still encourage folk to do the same. Don't get me wrong, there is power in the fellowship of believers. But even though there is power in the fellowship of believers, if you show up at the church house and you ain't willing to connect with God in the church house because you aren't willing to connect with God outside the church house, just being present in the church house ain't enough. You know how I know that just being present in the church house ain't enough? Judas Iscariot was one of the 12. And he turned his back on Jesus Christ. According to the Bible, the one who we call the tempter, the Satan, was an angel in heaven. If an angel can fall, if Judas can turn his back on Jesus, presence isn't enough. What is enough 
is if you allow the resurrecting power of God to prove to you that you are more than important to the Lord, to prove to you that Jesus' sacrifice wasn't wasted, to prove to you that you are worth dying, living, and coming back for. And if Jesus has done that for you, there's one more locked door that Jesus wants to break through for you. Jesus wants you to know that today is not the end of your story with God. God's got more for you. God's got some folks that God wants to bless through you. God's got some folks that God wants to heal through you. God's got some miracles and some signs and some wonders that God wants to work through you. But if God is to do what God is famous for. You got to have enough courage to be like Thomas and respond. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I get what's going down. I'm going to stop evaluating myself by how I think somebody else's faith walk is going. I'm going to start trusting that since you are the one who saved me, you knew who you were saving when you saved me. You knew that I would have some good days and I would have some bad days. You knew that I would have some all the time faithful days and I would have some wavering faith days. And because you knew you would show up on time, every time to give me what I need to believe. You would show up on time every time to give me what I need for my way, for my faith, to get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. So I would know and 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 I would know that my place with you, Jesus, is secure. Church, stop. Hey, what's that saying? Jesus Christ has come to town. And your living for Jesus has not, is not, will not be in vain. This is the word of God for the people of God. All thanks and praise be to God.